It's extremely common for ingrown toenails to present to my practice. This patient was suffering from an ingrown toenail for over eight months. It improved, then it got worse, improved, got worse, to the point where there was pus draining from the edge of the toenail. In this particular example, we're demonstrating how we perform what's called a matrixectomy, and this is when we permanently remove the side of the toenail to prevent it from coming back. A matrixectomy involves removing about two to three millimeters of the side of the toenail, and then we introduce a chemical into the border of the nail fold under the eponychium, which is the cuticle area. This chemical creates a burn, which will stop the toenail from growing back from that side. Patients will sometimes ask if this creates a cosmetically changed toenail, or if it'll look funny, or if their toenail will look thinner or more narrow than it should, and it really doesn't. I usually tell my patients that the only people who would know are you, myself, and anyone in the room that's seeing us do the procedure, and sometimes other patients that have had these done. We do our best to make sure we're removing a small portion so that it does not look cosmetically unacceptable. Once the nail border is removed, the chemical goes under the eponychium, which creates this burn. And the patient has around two to four weeks of recovery. I'm commonly asked, how long am I going to be incapacitated or what's the recovery period like for a procedure like this? Well, the recovery involves soaking the toe twice a day in either warm water and Epsom salts or warm water and an antibacterial soap, such as Dawn dish soap or any soap that has an antibacterial component to it. And you're doing this to facilitate drainage so that the border where we took the nail plate from does not clog up or get infected. Two weeks is sometimes enough and sometimes it goes on to be four weeks. In terms of what the patient is restricted from after having this procedure done, there's really no restriction. They can resume normal activity within 24 to 48 hours. I usually let runners run the next day. Sometimes patients will call and say, it's tender, I'm worried something's wrong. And that's usually the chemical causing the burn that creates an inflammatory response, which creates pain for the patient. But this typically wouldn't restrict them from doing anything. So if you've had this done and you have to call to ask, am I allowed to run after this procedure? Most of the times I would say yes. You aren't damaging anything. It's just creating pain. So aside from a matrixectomy, the other option is to perform a nail avulsion where we don't put the chemical in. So you can see we're using this cotton-tipped applicator now to insert the chemical. When we do a nail avulsion, we're not putting the chemical in. We're just simply removing that border of the nail to let the infection calm down. You can see this patient had a swollen nail fold, which is the skin adjacent to the side of the nail that we removed. The infection creates this inflammation, causing the skin to swell. So sometimes when we perform a simple nail avulsion, the inflammation will go down, and when the toenail grows back, the problem doesn't reoccur. It takes about six to nine months for a toenail to grow back after a nail avulsion. So if you've had a nail avulsion performed, you won't know if the problem will reoccur for at least six to nine months when you're waiting for that nail to grow back. How do we pick which procedure to perform on a patient? Well, if it's been a chronic condition and the nail or the infection keeps coming back and you've had a nail avulsion performed and it comes back again, then it's time to perform a matrixectomy. If this is a one-time infection, such as if you're younger, maybe in the teenage years, or this is the first time you've ever had this happen, then we would perform a nail avulsion and reserve the matrixectomy for a time when it continues to reoccur or if it's later in life. You can see the bandage we're putting on now will control some of the bleeding. There was a green tourniquet that gets removed after this procedure, and that was just to control bleeding during the process. If you have any questions about ingrown toenails or you want to learn more about this procedure, drop a comment in the comment section below. If there's any other procedures you want to see us perform in the office, please be sure to let me know.